This week we discuss the shooting at Borough Hall in Brooklyn, New York City. The shooting of Gilbert Drohale and the arrest of Jocelyn Evering. The shooting was committed by William Grooms, a retired corrections officer. And I, I think we shouldn't just call it a shooting. Uh, I'm going to call it a murder. And the reason I'm going to call it a murder, I'm going to go over the statutes with you today. We're going to look at the video. And the reason we're going to call it a murder is because clearly there's an intent to kill uh, Gilbert Drohale and no defense to the charge of murder. And the reason I'm bringing this to you, this happened earlier this year, is because I feel that District Attorney Kenneth Thompson uh, is conflicted. Um, he is beholden to the Correction Officers Union, COBA, which is the Correctional Officers Benevolent Association, and we've discussed them before, uh, you know, how they provide uh, basically a motorcycle escort. They run through red lights and guide traffic and do all of that. And they're armed and they protect politicians and candidates uh, from being shot at by gang members. So in Ken Thompson's case, while he's campaigning, he doesn't necessarily want someone from the Bloods or Crips uh, shooting at him from a project window or or something like that uh you know it's very very comforting to have uh armed security all of whom have badges and the right to carry guns uh surrounding you and campaigning with you and in this particular case uh what's going on was that if uh Ken Thompson doesn't uh, follow through and let their boy off, this retired corrections officer, you know, maybe next time they're riding in convoy to support him, uh, they might decide to shoot at him. You know, or maybe they won't provide the security, or maybe they'll attack, uh, who knows. But there's that threat there. And this union has been known to have gang affiliations, uh, according to Preet Barrera, and, you know, they, they commit murders and they, they target people and deprive people of their civil rights and of their human rights and of the right to just be alive. And what particularly uh, struck me was that they presented a mugshot of the deceased, Gilbert Drohale. Now, this, of course, uh, comes... You know, as Ken Thompson is pursuing charges against a Chinese American officer um, for killing Akai Gurley, um, that officer Peter Liang, uh, basically he's a rookie officer, had his gun out, and you know the gun uh, uh, released, and bravo to Ken Thompson for charging him. Um, you know, you can't be reckless. But here we have a straight up caught on tape murder. And what makes it a murder, we're going to go through. Um, but even more so, this could have been a tragedy of even greater proportion because this murder took place with a gun at one of the busiest train stations in the city of New York, in one of the most crowded areas packed with kids, with school kids from, like, there must be 20 different schools in the area. And, lo and behold, he didn't even get so much as a shame, shame, shame. Uh, 
So let's take a look and, and see what's going on. But first, let's talk about some of the other police shootings and what's different about them. Again, the front tag. Okay. Actually, it is. Go ahead and take your seatbelt off for me. Go ahead and take your seatbelt off. Stop! I'm giving you a lawful order. You I'm going to drag you out of here. So you're going to get in and drag me out of my own car? Get out of the car! And then you I will light me? you up! Get out! Wow! Now! Wow! Get out of the car! Ready for a failure to signal! You're doing all of this for Get over there! Right, yeah. Yeah, let's take this to court. Right. His leg look broke. Look at his leg. Look at his leg. That boy leg look broke. His leg broke and y'all dragging him like that. Murder, pow, victim punched in the face and immediately shot at point blank range. With the National Outrage at Police Killings, 12 year old Tamir Rice, investigation in Cleveland, Freddie Gray in Baltimore, cops are indicted. Even in the heart of Old Dixie, Officer Michael T. Slager indicted for the murder of Walter Scott. Officer Justin Craven indicted for killing Ernest Sater Rice Sr. In both cases, South Carolina, a former slave state, has charged the officers with the killings. But here in New York City, it's open season on blacks and Latinos if you're knighted with the badge. From Eric Garner's killing in Staten Island through choking to the cold-blooded, premeditated murder of Gilbert Drohio by retired corrections officer William Grooms, both of these killings were caught on tape. In the Drohio case, the video shows that Grooms went up the stairs and punched Drohio in the face, then immediately shot him when Drohio raised his hands to protect his face. In the heart of Dixie, South Carolina, white cops get indicted for murdering blacks on video. Not here in New York. Murder. Pow. Victim punched in the face and immediately shot at point blank range. Murder. Victim punched and shot. Both the Garner and Drohale killings were not committed in the jurisdiction of the crusading U.S. Attorney Freak Barrara, Southern District of New York. These killer cops can rest easy knowing that they won't have him going after them. Instead, both Brooklyn and Staten Island are in the Eastern District, as we have been telling you for over a decade, where the motto is to aid and abet. Of course, we've got Eric Garner in Staten Island, and Staten Island's a very Republican borough, so it's not such a surprise there are no indictments there. Um, <clears throat> we have Pasco Washington, uh, Antonio Zambrano Morales, he shot. Uh, North Carolina, Walter Scott. The officer there is charged with murder. We have Baltimore, Freddie Gray. The six officers there, both black and white, are charged with murder. The University of Cincinnati, Samuel Dubois, Hamilton County, that officer is charged with murder. 
in Cleveland, we have Tamir Rice, only 12 years old. Now, so far, there have been no charges, but one thing's for sure, there's been some, um, some examination, some investigation. Someone's taking it seriously. And Ferguson, Michael Brown. The officer was investigated by the feds, and the entire system down there was investigated by the feds. Chicago, 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. Gardenia, California. We have uh, uh, who shot Ricardo Diaz Zeferino with his hands, well, his hands were coming down, but obviously they're empty. And, of course, you know, just non-shooting situations. A 14-year-old girl, manhandled, <laughs> in public, thrown to the ground, and he pulls his gun on a group of teenagers. But do you know what all of those have? They have officers on duty, in uniform, identifiably as such and that believe it or not is an exception i mean we 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 don't want you know officers to be afraid to stop a bank robber or, or someone who's attacking a school with a gun we we want the officer to be able to say hey you i'm an officer stop and even if that even if the officer's wrong about the person he's saying hey you to the person has to say hey you know that's an officer you know that's a little different. Uh, gotta, gotta back away or whatever. Or somehow understand that that's an individual with authority. Here we have a guy who's off duty. He's not even an NYPD cop. He has an unloaded gun, and he says that he felt his life was in danger. So he's on a subway. So we're going to talk about that. Now, what is murder? All right. What is murder? Well, in the state of New York, we know that under uh, Article Penal Law, Article 125, Section 27, A person is guilty of murder when with the intent to cause the death of another person, they cause the death of that person or of a third person. We also have uh, murder two, the second degree, Article 125, Section 125.25, that's the penal law. Murder in the second degree. A person is guilty of murder in the second degree when, with intent to cause the death of another person, he causes the death of such person or of a third party, except that any prosecution under this subdivision, there's an affirmative defense. Da, da, da. Um, under circumstances evincing a depraved indifference to human life, he recklessly engages in conduct which creates a grave risk of death to another person. And acting alone or with other persons, they attempt to commit uh, attempt to commit uh, a robbery or some other uh, felony. We also have um, a defense to murder. Um, one of the defenses is that you you were justified, like you were an officer of the law, etc. Now the difference between murder one and murder two, uh, just <clears throat> basically briefly. Um, one of the big differences is if you're trying to kill someone who is a witness to uh, prosecution, to a crime, and is cooperating to, uh, with the prosecution, uh, an officer of the law of some type, including correction officers, etc., etc. Um, so if you just want to kill a regular Joe, well, that's okay. You're not facing as much harm. <laughs> Uh, but if you go after uh, someone who has a heightened importance, such as uh, an officer or a judge or 
something of that matter. This is New York law. Um, but New York law has something called justification. Now, what we know is justification is um, self-defense. So under Article 35, uh, New York penal law, justification, use of physical force in defense of a person. A person may, subject to the provisions of subdivision 2, use physical force upon another person when and to the extent he or she reasonably believes such to be necessary to defend him or herself. Now, we took a look at that video. It didn't look like he had to defend anything. He attacked. Okay, well, anyway. So, him or herself or a third person from what he or she reasonably believes to be the use or imminent use of unlawful physical force by such other person unless, unless, capitalize that, A, the latter's conduct was provoked by the actor with the intent to cause physical injury to another person. So in other words, if you walk up and punch someone in the face and they raise their hands to punch you back, that's not self-defense. B. The actor was the initial aggressor. Except that in such case the use of physical force is nevertheless justifiable if the actor has withdrawn from the encounter, withdrawn, moved away, and effectively communicated such withdrawal to such other person, but the latter persists in continuing uh, the incident by use or threatened use of, of unlawful physical force. So if you punch him in the face and then immediately back away and go, oh, oh no, please don't hurt me. Um, that might that might do it, but even then, a very very shaving of the hair. This is a jury question. This isn't a prosecutor's question. C. The force, the physical force involved, is the product of a combat by agreement. In other words, pit fighting. <laughs> okay. Now here's section two of this. A person may not use deadly physical force upon another person and under circumstances. Uh, specified in subdivision one, unless the actor reasonably reasonably believes that such other person is using or about to use deadly physical force. Even in such case, however, the actor may not use physical force. May not use deadly physical force if he or she knows that, with complete personal safety to oneself or others. He or she may avoid the necessity of doing so by retreating. Now, it then specifies you don't have to retreat if you're in your home and you're not the initial aggressor. In other words, if you invite the pizza man in, punch him in the face, and threaten to kill him, and then when he punches you back, you shoot him and say it's self-defense, that ain't going to work. But if you didn't invite him in and you didn't start the thing and the pizza man attacks you saying he wants a bigger tip, well, yeah, you don't have to retreat. Or, or, you are a peace officer acting pursuant to Section 35.30. This dude is retired. He's not even off duty. He's retired. He's gone. This does not apply to him. There is no self-defense here. Now, one of the things going on here is there's this tremendous recklessness going on. All right? So, <clears throat> the as a former correction officer, you know, we know that they have been indicted and they've been convicted of torturing black people. Now, these are other black people with badges. Torturing and bullying other black people and using gang members to bully people to actually contract. Well, how do we know that there's not something bigger than this uh, going on? Now, why do I say it's murder? Other than just the, the incident, on-duty police officers, on-duty who are undercover or who in plain clothes run to an incident, they know they can be shot and killed by a fellow police officer merely because they're a black guy with a gun. This is not something you take lightly. This character is sitting in the train 
Now he's under fear these guys are going to hurt him. He pulls out his unloaded gun and begins loading it. Now, listen to this. If you really are afraid of these guys, you are not going to pull out a gun. And you are not going to pull out an unloaded gun. Because they're right up on you. They will take that from you and shove it up your you-know-what. Okay? So, he knows these are not thugs. Gilbert Drahao and Jocelyn Evering. Drahao is a father of a five-year-old girl. He's 32 years old. Jocelyn Evering, he's 29 years old. These aren't teenagers. These are people who worked. As a matter of fact, they work in construction. They have been up since 4 a.m. in the morning. They're tired. Okay? And they're on their way home. And... You know, people say, oh, they were in the door. Well, first of all, who are these people? How hard did the police try to find the other, like, 400 people on that damn train? All right? There's some guy running around with a gun, and suddenly they're all concerned about his well-being. I don't think so. This reeks. So, if you're a cop, a black cop, and you run to the scene with your gun out, you are very much afraid of dying. Okay? Because you're a black guy with a gun. Now, a black correction officer with a gun out and loaded and having shot someone would be even more concerned than less. And see, this is the beauty of how you know that something's wrong here. There is one place other than Rikers Island where a correction officer knows he's got the backing and support of a precinct and a precinct that has central booking which has constant constant contact with the department of corrections and its officers that's the 84th precinct in brooklyn which you know i can go into like some of the fishy monkey business where they 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 had these phony crashes in front of the brooklyn bridge um where they my mysteriously you know the officers chase away the witnesses okay so that's a, a shady precinct anyway but not the shadiest mind you but we have the brooklyn house of detention right there at the Borough Hall stop. That's the stop for it. So he has this long journey from Bowling Green to Borough Hall to load his gun. And mind you, you don't pull out an unloaded gun against real thugs. They will take it from you and say, thank you for the $3,000 gift. Now we're going to beat you with the gun. <laughs> so Obviously, he knows he's dealing with working people, and what happened was, is you know what happened. He pushed his way through, because I'm carrying a gun. I'm big and bad. And he's going to push through these two guys, because they're, you know, they're rough looking. They don't look like Wall, Wall Street bankers. They're construction workers. And boom. He committed the murder. And he intended com to commit it, because he picked Burrow Hall. The other thing that lets you know it's cold-blooded murder is he's using an old playbook. See, in the old days, you want to have a, a defense of, oh, I was, I was justified by self-defense. You punch someone in the face, and then you back away as they raise their hands to defend themselves, which we see him do, Jorheo do, in the video. You shoot them, and now their hands are raised, and, and they're approaching you, and there's no video to show that you punched them in the face first. There's nothing there, but in today's world, everyone has a video camera at their side, and this fool didn't realize that. He didn't think about that. He wasn't worried about the guys videotaping him going up and down the stairs, Clearly in cold blood intending to murder this man. He punches him in the face. He doesn't even say anything. That's a straight up punch. He's not grabbing for the collar. What a load of crap. 
You cannot look at that video. He just walks up the stairs and punches him in the face. And Jorheo is saying, who the hell are you to threaten me with a gun? And he's standing his ground saying, look, you don't have the right to threaten me with a gun. And if you're a cop, let's get some cops down here and go over who you are. Now, he doesn't realize this guy is in the one precinct in the city where you can get away with murder if you're a corrections officer. I'm sorry, there might be three. One might be the tombs, and the other one is right outside of Rikers Island. But here you have this relatively new DA who's dealing with people who are his political backers, and poof, you know, he's shooting some, he, he's, he's got a Kai Gurley shooter, indicted when we know he didn't intend to kill anyone he's a freaking rookie didn't know what he's doing but someone's dead it's serious he's pushing it forward you applaud that right now the feeling is well there's racism involved i don't think it's really racism i think it's corruption because you see these are his his campaign donors and his volunteers and his security he shouldn't be on this case if he can't be fair. And obviously he can't be fair because all you have to do is look at that video. He was just waiting, biding his time to see how much flames were, were risen. And as you can see, a lot of the usual suspects who who go and protest didn't come out for this poor man, Drohale. What's even worse is Jocelyn Evering is he's just a guy who's there. He ran from the guy. He he went away. He said, I'm, I'm retreating. He's retreating from the guy with the gun. He didn't stand his ground. He retreats from the guy with the gun. The guy then turns around and goes upstairs and kills Drohale. So he gets arrested. What do you arrest him for? That's witness intimidation. Not only did you commit a murder, but you've got your pals intimidating the witness, the main witness. So you can put anybody in this train. You could say, oh, well, this other person was there and they said da 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 da. What we know for sure is on that video, there was an unexcused, unjustifiable discharge of the gun and an attack with a loaded gun. A punch in the face, followed by a shot as the man raises his arms to defend himself. Murder. What's also suspicious is, is the investigation of a guy running through one of the most crowded... I mean, the federal judges and their law clerks are walking through there. FBI agents are walking through there. The FBI is only like a couple of blocks down from... That's their station that they would take if they actually took trains. Um... You know, what we know is there was no search of the guy's house. There's no search of William Groom's house. He could have had a big picture on the wall. Today I'm going out and killing someone. I'm picking someone at random. Or he could say, I've been hired. He could have it in writing. I've been hired to kill Drahale. His ass is, is grass today. He's dead. We don't know because no one investigated.